lack of water is a serious problem here. The kids get parasites and diarrhea from it. The water isn't clean. We live in a poor environment. The sisters that I knew and who worked with all of the villages, they had muddy roads or no roads at all. There was no day when there was all electricity and water available. And so what I realized was that we really needed to, before we could do anything about communications, we had to do something about electricity. And so that became the beginning of the project. It's not simply the physical suffering that people endure on a day-by-day -day basis. It's, it's a very difficult, very tough life. But probably the, the, the biggest effect it has on human beings is that it limits their vision of the world. Most of the time, they're involved in difficult physical tasks in order to get enough calories to get them through to the end of the day. They're thinking solely about survival. They have to. So one of the essential components of this project has to be the education of the people for whom it is being installed. It's a really big project, and it helps the people. And it is what the Lord has asked us to do, to share what we have with the poor. We live in a poor environment. In the DRC, which has very, very little infrastructure, the majority of the sisters' communities are located in rural, very, very rural areas to the east and south of Kinshasa and in Congo Central. Ah, Papa on est prêt? Oui, oui. Oh, okay. oui. Oh. C'est maintenant ou jamais. <laughs> <laughs> the drive time is 21 hours at an average speed is approximately 20 kilometers per hour. Once we get into open country, it's not that we are off-road, there is no road. In the DRC, one of the things it is famous for is the absolute and total lack of roads. The country has effectively one paved road, and the rest of the time, you're on your own. Hello, Sister Lucy. How are you? Papa <laughs> Louis. You're bringing water, right? We are waiting for water. So, Pelende is uh, a village in Quango. It's a large village, it has about 5,000 people, and it sits atop a high plateau. The Jesuits and the sisters established the community here, the, the SND community with the schools and the hospital, the church, all of this was established in 1956. There's a very vibrant church community. People really like their village, but due to the, the, the remote nature of it, the limited electrical power available and the other basic factors, it's a difficult place to live. There is really no form of conventional work here. They, they grow what they can in their fields. Uh, for the most part, they have only very, very rudimentary sanitary systems. Uh, a lot of children die very young. A lot of mothers die in childbirth. So underneath the sort of the, the, the cheery surface, there's a very, very grim and difficult reality for, for people who live here. Oh, this is we also have the water issue. 
The lack of water is a serious problem here. We have a rain system here. When it rains, water will fill up the well. It's for the sick people in the hospital, for the women in the maternity ward. It's for the patients that just had surgery. But the water is not clean, so we don't drink it. We only use it to wash the patients and the clothes. We put chlorine in it. But if it doesn't rain, we don't have any water. One of the things that we learned along the way is that the biggest need that they have in any of these societies is water. Life without running water is difficult. Every morning, everyone runs to the river to look for water. And every night, they do the same thing. And this water isn't potable. And it's unhealthy. The kids get parasites and diarrhea from it. The water isn't clean. So in Tanga, is a community that has the challenge that it needs a development essentially from scratch. That means that we need to find the capital to do a photovoltaic electrical power system from scratch. And we also need to build a water system from scratch along with what we hope will be a school building. Please, dear students, you are at the final day of your exams. So what will you do during these two days off? What could you do at home? Study and help out your parents. This is the first graders' classroom. You can see that when it rains, we have to escape. The water oozes through. The classroom is not in great shape. It's old. The classroom is crying. If we would have good classrooms, electricity and water, the students could study at night. They could stay at school all day. They could wash themselves and drink clean water and study comfortably. With the sisters having the basics of electricity, water and sanitation, and internet resources, it allows them to begin to improve the conditions of life for the people around them. We're there. We have to try. Louis is probably not going to be there forever, and I'm not going to be here forever, but they are going to be here forever. Therefore, they need to actually be able to transfer the information to the next generation of sisters and students. I want this project to remain. Even if we are not here anymore, the next generation will continue with the project.